Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, we're on the uh, final video on Solace today, and today I'm gonna talk about the top five Solace blunders. Now, I'm not hating on Solace here. If you check out my other videos. I give it overwhelmingly positive reviews. However, if you are going to be installing uh, Solace, it is important that you understand there are there is no Linux distribution that is perfect. And so I'm gonna tell you about the uh, some of the issues that I've encountered with Solace. Some of these are really like essentially non-issues, more annoyances than anything. Uh, a couple of them are a little bit more major. So just be aware of that. Um, obviously, everything's been working great. I usually determine how well a distribution works by how many times do I abandon this one and boot instead off of the internal operating system. And with the case of Solace, the answer was zero. It always worked for me. Uh, it always did exactly what it was supposed to do. And, uh, and it, was, uh, it was a good operating system. But the time has come to wipe Solace, install something else to get some experience on another distro. So what are my top five blunders? Number five is the limitation to the software that exists. Now, this is a good or a bad, depending on the way you look at it. On the one hand, there is nothing in the Solace library in the software center that will not work on your system, at least for the vast majority of users. Okay, and uh, that's kind of important because you do always get a system that works. Everything is vetted to go specifically with Solace because everything in Solace is built ground up. It's not like Ubuntu where there may be, you know, a 500 or more abandonware in there that may or may not actually work and they still exist. So you have to install four or five different options to find something that works. Now the downside of this is if you know there's a package that you want to use and it's not available in the software center, you are going to have a lot harder time getting that package to work. In my individual use case, I use more or less normal software, so there's nothing that really got in my way. But like I said, some people, Solace is too limited in the amount of software. If you need something you know, on the edge or, or fringe, then uh, you may have an issue. But as far as I was concerned, I use Thunderbird and Evolution. I use um, Chromium and Firefox, GIMP, Kodi, um, and a few other applications here and there. I think I also installed uh, Calibri. Can't remember if I installed Sigil or not, um, or if I even tried to. Um, but regardless, um, overall it had everything what I needed, but it is certainly too limited for some people. So if you do have very specific niche software you need to run, you might want to check if Solace has it before making the decision to run on Solace. Number four, screensaver woes for me. Um, I had a lot of issues in this department in that there's times I want the screensaver to, to kick on, or in this case, just the monitor to go blank. You know, I turn on my computers and they're on a good, you know, 18 hours a day or so. Um, and so for me, there's times I like the computer, I like to turn it on, and if I'm sitting here working, maybe I'm just on one of the other computers, I don't want the screen to go dark, especially in Solace where I don't seem to have the option to open it back up and just go start working again, I have to re-enter the password. And that was a little bit on the annoying side. But there's times that I'm gonna be out of the office for a couple hours and I don't wanna turn the computer off and so I like the screen to go dark. Well, there was a few different options to attempt to install. One of them is apparently there's a hot corner where if you put your mouse up in one of the corners, it's supposed to you know, toggle on or off the screen going dark. I don't, there's no notification or instance of that, so I don't know if that's actually working. In my experience in attempting to work with it, the answer is no. Of course, um, there is the setting inside, I don't remember if it's in the budgie desktop settings, I think it's actually in the just the main settings, uh, which come with the, the GNOME build. When you go into your main settings, you have the option to turn your screen lock on. And you'll see that the screen lock is on. In other words, it's supposed to turn off after five minutes. It's not doing it. Now, I initially I had turned this off to test this turning off and it 
it would certainly, no matter if this was on or off, it was always shutting everything off. So I installed caffeine. So you'll notice that caffeine is installed on the system, which I should have to come down here and turn on caffeine in order to suspend the screensaver or, or in other words, the timeout. But that doesn't even work anymore. Now, no matter what I do, the screen always stays on perpetually. Well, I want to be able to turn this on or turn this off. This is what I really like about my Linux Mint KDE build, where if I hit this button and turn that thing on, it works. The screen will stay on. If I know I'm leaving the office, I can just come over here, take caffeine, toggle it off, and uh, it toggles off for me, and now the screen will go dark. It works exactly the way it's expected. On Solace, I simply cannot get this to work. It's either, no matter what the settings are, the screen turn goes dark, and then I have to unlock the computer again, or even if I want it to go dark because I'm gonna be out of the office for a couple hours, I don't have a choice. So I've just taken to just turning off the monitor when I leave, which is probably better practice anyway. Uh, but regardless, that is a little bit of an annoyance to me that I cannot get the behavior that I'm expecting to get turn off the ability to turn the screen off or turn it on depending on my use case. I can't seem to get that function working. As I said, fairly minor, but still annoying and other Linux distros actually allow me to solve this. Number three, uh, this is again, a kind of a minor annoyance and particularly this is when the computer first turns on. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to duplicate it now since the computer has been on for a while. When you first turn the computer on, you can even let it sit for you know 10 minutes after it's turned on. When you first try to load many applications, it takes in excess of a minute to actually load the applications. So uh, for example, if I go in and boot up, for example, LibreOffice, it's not uncommon for me to sit here and be looking at this LibreOffice screen for a good two minutes. Um, in this case, it actually booted right up. Like I said, it's not as big, of a, as big of a concern later in the day after the computer has been on all day. Uh, but nevertheless, it is a little bit on the annoying side that uh, when I first turn on the computer, even if I, after I wait for, for a few minutes, it gets to this point where I just have to boot things up and then walk away for a few minutes. It takes a long time to boot up many applications. As I said, I couldn't demonstrate that exactly because the computer has been on all day. I didn't want to power cycle the whole thing to show you how that works. But I, it is a very consistent thing every single day. First time I go to launch an application, it just sits there and lags for a long period of time. A little bit on the annoying side. Number two, some driver woes. Now, this is where we start getting into the two that are pretty much these two are going to keep people as a holdout to solace. Uh, one of those is drivers. There are indeed a lot of drivers that that um, come ready to install on Solus, and they have an extra utility in the system in order to look for additional drivers. So in the event that there are some other proprietary drivers, you can actually find them. However, that being said, the number of drivers is actually fairly limited, which means if you want to install many printers, I couldn't get any of the printers that I have to work on this very easily. Okay, if you want to install many of the printers, if you want to install several wireless adapters or any other fringe software that may not be core and built into the Linux kernel, then you are going to have to, if you can make it at all, you're going to have to download the source code of the drivers and build it manually. And that is certainly outside of the scope of several people's skill level. And so for this, this is a big negative that this is one of the few computers I have not been able to get working with my printer. Now, to be fair, I didn't spend a ton of time trying because every other computer in my office works with my printer just fine. If I really needed to print something, and which isn't an often thing, I just print it from one of the other computers. However, if this were my only computer, I would have a big fight on my hand to get it to work with my printer, even though my printer uh, manufacturer makes Linux drivers available. Now, uh, you can download them in RPM or in DEB, uh, there is in theory a way to get those packages working on Solace, but I've heard it is more trouble than it is worth. And so it's generally more acceptable to get out there and uh, build your print drivers. And this is what you'll find is they're talking about several different um, discussion threads on 
how to get various drivers working. I, and I identified um, Wi-Fi and printers because those seem to be the biggest areas. There is some discussion on NVIDIA cards. They've taken some solutions to that. But still, if it's not a common driver, you're probably out of luck with Solace, unfortunately. Before we get into the number one reason, uh, the number one Solace blunder, I'll remind you, check out the links in the description down below if you want to help support the channel. Uh, the one link that has all of the information is switched to linux.com forward slash support. Check a look at the, um, the shop.switchtolinux.com if you want to pick up a mouse, cup, a mouse pad, a coffee cup, a t-shirt, anything like that. Uh, those are available. Um, also check out the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Tom M or thinklifemedia.com. All of those are linked in the description down below. Number one is this is an issue with the current Solace. They are aware of the issue, and I believe this will be resolved in the next major release. But a lot of people, myself including, when you install Solace and then run the updates through the GUI, it breaks the system. It will not boot any longer. Now, there is a fix for this. I was looking for the help article. I couldn't find it. So um, the help, the fix does exist. Basically, you need to use your Alt F2 or Alt F3 key, log into the terminal after the thing. Basically, what it does is it breaks the, it breaks the desktop environment. And you have to get in there with the terminal and you need to run some corrections on the package repositories and then do another update from the terminal. Once all that is done, Solace will boot and you won't generally have any issues after that. Um, but that is a major issue that it gets installed, you run your first round of updates, and then you're left with a system that, uh, that simply won't boot. That's a huge problem, and it's one that, uh, it's one that for sure we need, to, we need to see resolved. Now, like I said, they are working on resolving this, but as of right now, the current uh, version of Solace, when this video is being made, that is going to be an issue. If you, uh, if you um, are looking to run Solace and you don't know how to fix that, it's worth the time to find the post online. It is on Solace's official website. You need to find that post. Make sure you <clears throat> print it out with a printer that hopefully is working and follow those steps to fix it when the GUI breaks your Solace build. Um, otherwise, you're going to be in a world of hurt trying to get the system back up and running. So those are my top five blunders with the Solace system. Overall, mostly fairly minor. I like the Solace build. I very much enjoyed my time on it, but it is now time to move on to other pastures. So thanks for watching this video, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.